Assalamu alaikum and hello. My name is Hafsa and my name is Hannah. We both go to a DDSB school and today we're going to learn how to code. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? We will be, we will be using Scratch. I'm sure you all have heard of it. We will be coding a maze game all by ourselves. And I promise you, you're going to feel like the tiniest and the smartest coder on the planet. So let's get straight into it. On your web browser, Google scr Scratch. Click on the first link. This is your Scratch homepage. If you want, you can make yourself an account by clicking Join Scratch, but for now, click Create so we can start our code. We are now inside our game. This is where we do all the coding. This blank space right here is your work area. This green flag will run your program. As in, if you click on it, your program will start working. This icon help here helps you add new characters, and this one helps you add new backdrops. This section right here contains all the commands. We have motion, looks, sound, and more. Today, we're going to be making a maze game. But before we do any coding, we need to create the actual maze. Click on the stage button here, then click backdrops, which should be in the top right corner. Click on this icon. It will enable you to draw a rectangle. Now drag this icon and make your background. To make this simple as possible, I'll be just adding two rectangles. You can change the color if you want by clicking here. I'll make mine blue. We can. Uh, we are also going to edit our character. I'm just going to make mine smaller. You don't have to do this. Now that we have our background, we're going to start coding. First things first, we want our character to start off at the starting point whenever the green flag is clicked. For example, if our character stops around somewhere here and someone else clicks the green flag, we don't want it to stay here. We want it to go all the way here because this is where the game starts. To do that, go to the events tab and uh, take out the one green flag clicked button. What this will do is whenever this button is clicked, it'll do whatever is attached to this block. Go to motion and um, as you can see, there is a go to um, X and Y coordinates uh, command right here. What this will do is um, whenever this flag is clicked, it'll go straight to the coordinates that have been set here. If I move my uh, character, you can see these coordinates keep changing like that. And one more time like that. So we want it right around here. And we're going to take this out and attach it to the when flag click button. Let's test this out. Let me put this somewhere here and green flag. See, that's step one. Now we want our character to move whenever we click a certain button. For example, if we if I click the up arrow button, I want my character to go up. If I click the right arrow button, I want to I want to get I want my character to go right. To do that, let's go to the events section. But instead of the one flat click button. We're going to take out the when space key pressed um, command. Get it out of here. Put it into your workspace. There we go. Now what this will do is whenever um, this key, whatever key you click on, is pressed, it'll do a certain action. For now, let's start with um, the up arrow. So when up arrow key pressed, we want it to move, say, 10 steps. So let's go to motion. Let's get to move 10 steps and attach it to this block. Now what this will do is whenever the up arrow key is pressed, our character will move 10 steps in a certain direction. So let's do this, green flag, it goes to the starting point, up arrow. As you can see, instead of going up, it's actually going towards the right. That's because this is the default um, um, direction that your character goes in. To change that, you need to also attach a point in direction command to this block. So get a point in direction command from the motion section and attach it to this exact same block. But instead of 90, which is the default, you're gonna change it to zero. So just move this arrow like that. That's facing the up direction and it's at zero. So now if we test this out again, up, it goes up. Now that's a problem. We don't want our sprite to uh, be in this position when the game is started. We want it to be in the correct position as in this position, right? To do that, we're going to add another point in direction, but not to this block. 
we're actually going to add it to this block. So point and direction, 90, because you want it to face the right direction. So 90, and then green flag, there we go. Up, it goes up, green flag, there we go. Now we want to do this for the other three arrow keys. Instead of doing it all over again three times, we're just going to copy it and paste it three times. Just right click, duplicate, you have one. Do this two more times. And then now we can just change the information. So instead of one up arrow key pressed, change it to when down arrow key pressed and change point and direction to 180. You can type it in or you can move this arrow. I feel like the arrow is easier because you can visualize it. So do the same to the other two um, blocks. So when the right arrow key, point and direction 90, and then one left arrow key, point and direction negative 90. There we go. Now when I rotate the start button, it goes to the starting point. It faces the right direction. And when we use the arrow keys, it'll move throughout the game. There we go. Basic commands down. But there is one teeny tiny problem. We can still go over these blue rectangles and we don't want that because this is a maze and we shouldn't be going over this. To fix this, we need to add another one green flag clicked block onto our little space here, into our space here. So go to events, get the one green flag clicked, put it in here. And now we need to add a loop. As in a loop, what a loop does is basically whenever this flag is clicked, it'll keep on doing whatever's in it until your game stops. That's what it means. It's, it's pretty straightforward. A loop as in a loop. It'll keep looping and looping and looping. Just go to control forever. It, instead of, it's not called a loop in here. It's actually called a forever block. Attach it to your one green flag clicked. Also get an if blank then block. So whenever this is clicked, if this is true, then it will do a certain action. Okay. So we want our character to um, go back to the starting point whenever uh, it touches a blue, when, whenever it touches the blue rectangle. So it's supposed to we're going through this maze right here, and then I touch it right here, right? I want it to go all the way back here. To do that, we're just gonna copy this little thing from here because we want it to go to the exact same coordinates and point in the right direction. Just copy it and put it in the if then block. We need to add one more thing in this blank space right here. We need to specify, we need to, we need to tell our program that when the sprite touches this blue color, well, black because it has a, a border, whenever it touches this color, we want it to do this, okay? So for that, go to sensing and take this one out, touching color question mark, and put it into the space. It'll just pop right in. Click on the color. And you can't really guess the color here, so I would recommend using this icon. Just click on it, and then you can select the color that you want. We want this color because that's the border of our rectangle. But you can uh, you can uh, you can just sort of check uh, the rectangle or whatever the, whatever you have on your screen. I have a rectangle with a border, so I'm just going to use this. So click on it, and now we have that color in. So whatever now what it'll do is if I start the game and I go. Th um, suppose here and then I forget to take a turn and I go straight into the rectangle it'll get me back to here we want uh, our program to say good job or well done whenever this character gets to right here gets to the finish mark to do that we need to add another sprite or another character if you may if you click on this button right here this icon just click on it and just make this to make this easier i'm just going to google not google sorry we're just going to search line select this and now you have a line on your screen click on it and go to costumes we can make it smaller here click on the red line make it a little smaller because we don't want we don't want it to be that big and then you can keep it right here okay perfect go to your code and now we want this red line to to stay there for the entirety of the game. 
So we're going to do the exact same thing we did to the character right in the beginning. But in this case, we're going to make sure that it stays there till the end. So click on one green flag clicked. Motion. Go to these coordinates. That's it. But now we need this uh, this little green this little red line to display a good job message whenever our character touches it. To do that, we're gonna go into our red line. We are going to go into um, events. We're gonna add a forever block. And then we're gonna add, add an if block. It's really uh, similar to the last command that we did for our character. It's just, we're, we're gonna have to change the colors here. Now over here, we're gonna go back into sensing. We're gonna get the touch and color question mark. We're gonna put it into the blank spot. We're going to, um, instead of this color, we're gonna add the color of our sprite. So I'll click on this. Let's get the orange part. Perfect. And then we're gonna go, instead of the motion looks, uh, which, which is what we've been doing, instead of the motion tab, we're gonna go into the looks tab and we're gonna get um, this one, say hello. You can type in whatever you want here. I'm just gonna type in good job, exclamation point. So what this will do is whenever our character reaches to the, reaches the end, it's gonna display good job. So let's test this out. Full screen, on, boom, boom, boom. It's the last step, and there we go. Give yourself a pat on the back because you created your very own game. Good job. This is just the beginning of your little coders. I hope you all learned something from this video. Be sure to click the other games that other users have created and, cre and try to make your own. It'll only get more fun from this point onwards. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Bye. Assalamu alaikum.